What you're looking at here is my camping gear sales spreadsheet for the year 2019, well, at least the first four months. But I also want to keep track of it by employees, so I added their employee ID. So I got this cross-tab thing going on here. We're at this intersection. For January, for that employee, he's got sales of over $10,000. And so what I wanted to do is I want to get a total for the month of January, so I added a label over to the left-hand side that says this row, well, from this point forward, is going to be the totals for each of the months of, well, January, February, March, and April. So right now I want to enter in a formula for January that's going to add up all these cells here by each employee for that month. So with the selected, go ahead and hit the equals key on the keyboard to let Excel know that we want to enter in a formula. And then type in the first cell reference, which is going to be in column C. In fact, for January, they're all going to be in column C, but different rows. So we'll type in C. And then it brings up a list of all these functions. Just ignore that for now. We'll cover that later on. And so it's column C, and it's going to be row 7. So type in 7. And you don't have to do uppercase. You can just go ahead and type it in and save yourself an extra, well, using the pinky for the shift key. Because after I hit enter, it'll automatically put the letters in uppercase. So save yourself some time there. So C7. And then I want to, well, you can see it's highlighted to let you know that that's the cell that's been referenced. In case if you're like, C7, is that right? Yeah, that's the one I want. Unless you got it memorized, but the highlight certainly graphically helps me identify which cell that I'm including in the formula. In any case, to go on, hit plus on the keyboard to say that now you want to add another cell. Same column, different row, row 8. So C8, and hey, now we get another color, so you can compare and contrast between the two knowing that it's not a selected range, but they're two different cell references within that formula. So then we can go ahead and hit plus, and let's do C10. Oopsie doodle, I made a mistake. I went and skipped over C9. Well, you can hover over the border of that cell that's currently selected until you can see a four-way arrow, and you can click and drag it up, and it goes to C9. Ooh, isn't that fancy? In any case, I don't want to get too complex on this. Let's keep it simple. Let's go back because I want to show you that when you hit enter and you're like, wait a second, that number doesn't look correct. And with such a simple formula, you can get a little bit of help by using the status bar down below. If you want to go ahead and click and drag and select your range, down below it gives you some of the stats like the average of what you have selected, the total cells that are counted up that contain numbers, and then the sum, which should be over 86,000. So something's not right. So what you can do is you can go back and select it, and it just displays the value. If you want to see the formula, then look up here in the formula bar. That's one way to see it. And you can see that we're missing, well, plus C9 to plus C10. So if you click inside of it, you can make your changes up there. The moment you click inside of it, you can see it highlights the cells that we already have, and you can see that, oh, we're missing C9. So we can come back and click put our cursor before C10 and do C9 plus and it's got it selected now everything looks grisly hit enter cool over 86,000 you can do it that way or you can go ahead and select it and then double click in it and you won't have to go up to the formula bar you can just make the changes there removes the resultant value of the formula and shows you the formula where you can go ahead and make your changes now when you hit the enter key on the keyboard it goes down a row if you want to stay in the same cell, when you double click and you're making changes, you can come up here and click on Enter. When you click on Enter, it accepts what you have there but stays in the same cell. So double click. You can also click Cancel and it stays in the same cell or you can hit the Escape key on the keyboard. And that can be very helpful because if you're in here and you're clicking around and you're like, wait, I want to click off so I can get out of it. Well, you're not getting out of it. You're making a bigger mess. And you can see here that now it wants to add E10, but it's not adding it correctly because we don't have the plus symbol in between. In any case, you find yourself in a mess, hit the escape key, and it goes back to the default. Clears it out, or you know, just go ahead and click the cancel button here. Okay, let's do it again, but slightly different when it comes to getting the total for the month of February. Go ahead and select in the next cell. Hit equals on the keyboard, and instead of typing it in, since it's right there, how about if we just go ahead and select it? And it'll automatically add it in for us. Oh, and it put it in uppercase. Like I said, let me hit the escape key to get out. When we go back here, everything that was lowercase is now uppercase. So let's come back. In any case, pun intended, hit equals, and then go up and select it. And you can see D7 here. And then hit plus, select the next cell, hit plus, hit the next cell, plus, next. Now, 
that works great when the cells are pretty close to each other, but if you have like a cell way off in boonie land, like you know, column Z, well, I don't want to scroll all the way over to column Z to select it, then can scroll all the way back to be able to see where I'm at. That's why it's good to know that you can actually enter in the reference here, type it in, and not have to be there visibly in front of you to select it, because scrolling, oh, that's too much. In any case, everything's there, looks grisly. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Fabulous. Now, the next thing that you can do is you can copy and paste your formulas. As long as you've got a correctly built database, one that looks organized, because Excel likes organization to help you with your work. So for example, what I mean by copying and pasting is that if I go ahead and take this formula, you can see up there, and I copy it by hitting Control C, which are the shortcut keys, Control C, and you get this highlighted, you get little lines going around it, it looks like marching ants to me. In any case, it means it's active, it's hot now. And you can also come up here on the Home tab and go to the Clipboard group and click on the Copy button, and you can see in the pop-up Control C, that works and then go to the next cell, well, for the column March, and paste it. And you can use the shortcut keys, Control-V as in Victor, to paste, or you can come up here on the Home tab to the clipboard and click on, well, you can see the pop-up, Control-V, click on Paste, and it'll paste it. Now, what does it paste? Does it paste the value or the formula? It's got to be the formula because these numbers are not the same. And you can see the ants are still marching around. In other words, you can keep pasting and pasting and pasting until the cows come home or until you can go ahead and get out of this copy mode. How do you get out of it? You hit the escape key and you get no more selection or marching ants. And so with the cell selected here, what do you get? Look up in the formula bar and is it the same formula as it has in, well, cell D12? No, because now we're in a new column E. So it's dynamic. It actually has a pattern it can base upon because it's organized here where we have column after column within the same range of data that Excel can figure out and go, oh yeah, let's go ahead and move it over when you copy and paste give it the same formula as far as adding up a cell, but we're in a new column. So that's pretty cool. As opposed to, well, having your data here, 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 all over the place and going, okay, the value is going to be in this cell. So you do all this to select it, to enter it, and then copy it and paste it to another cell that has its values scattered all over the place. That's not organized. In a later training video, I'll go over the different errors when it comes to building a database. Well, I say errors if you want to use Excel's features and get its help to quickly, when it comes to sorting or doing things like this, copying and pasting, to limit your workload here and let Excel do most of the work, then you want to watch that video. In any case, once it's over, you can see it's updated the formula to the new column E. And another shortcut, instead of just copying and pasting, is using the autofill handle. The autofill handle is in the bottom right hand corner of any cell, and in this case it's this one. You can see if you select any other cell, it's got that green little square. Let me go ahead and select this one. When you hover over it, you see my white cross? It goes from selecting cells, if you hover over the border, you get a four way arrow, to moving cells to the lower right hand corner to a black cross, which is the autofill handle that when you click and drag, in this case, when I drag it over to the right, it's going to copy the contents of the cell and paste it over to the right hand side. Ooh, isn't that cool? Well, did it work? Let's see. Are those numbers accurate? Select it, look up here in the formula bar, and instead of column E, it now has F. Row 7, right here through row 10. It works out. Cool. And so you can do that when you have, well, it organized like this and the columns are adjacent, that you want to go ahead and do a quick copy and paste. If you don't want to use the shortcut keys, just select, click and drag the black cross there over to the right and you're done. We'll cover the autofill handle in greater detail in a later training video. You do get a tag, some options after you use the autofill handle. You can click on, take a look at, you can just copy the cells or if you have formatting that's been applied to here like, well, B for bold and let me come up here and make it red and I click and drag the autofill handle over, I can say, you know what? Let me click on its tag and say, I want to fill it without the formatting. I just want that highlighted. In any case, I digress. We'll cover this in greater detail in a later training video. Just want to whet your appetite there. And let me hit undo a couple of times to get back to the regular format. Next, let's go ahead and do the monthly average. Now the average is, well, for the range here, the sales in January, since we already have the total, we could go ahead and have the formula equal the total and divide it by the number of salespeople or the different numbers in here to get the average between all four sales reps. 
So we can hit equals and select the total here and divided by is the forward slash which is on the keypad it's next to the number lock key and you want to type in 4 and hit enter. Is that the average? Well when it comes to the average you can verify this by looking down below on the status bar if you go ahead and select the range and go down here and if you don't see the average on the status bar and you can see it checks out 21,000 will over 21,000 there you go over 21,000 you can right click anywhere on the status bar and there you go average if it's not checked then you won't see it click off it's not there oh horrifying let's go back to average click off and hey we're back so that worked out well you can do it that way or let me go ahead and go to the next cell here for the average that we want to get for February and let's do what we did before let's go ahead and hit equals so we can let Excel know that we're going to enter in a formula and go ahead and select the first cell and we want to add up the next cell add up the next cell hit the plus sign on the keyboard add the next cell and then we want to divide that by four right okay something's not right about this formula if you remember back in your algebra days it wants to do division and multiplication first before it does any addition or subtraction so it's going to take cell D4 and divide it by 4 and then add up the remainder of the cells there and that's not going to give us the average right well not the correct average so what we want to do is you want to put in what's called the order of operation in other words use parentheses to say look add before you divide to do that you want to come in here at the beginning of the formula just after the equal sign and add in open parentheses and then just before the division which is that forward slash and close it so the order of operation is to do what's in the parentheses first and then once it adds everything up then take the total and divide it by four sound cool alrighty hit enter and is that right select the range let's double check over 12,000 over 12,000 great it worked out now we already know how to copy and paste so if you want we can just go ahead and select this cell and use the autofill handle lower right hand corner that green square get the black cross click and drag over instead of one but two cells let go and there's the average for March and April let's go back to March select the range over 27,000 boom got it for April select it over 15,000 that's over 15,000 great now you don't have to have cells that contain numbers to perform a calculation you can just go ahead and do it off on your own like for example select a blank cell and do let's see equals what's 200 minus 1 just make sure you put the equal sign in so it knows that you want to get a calculation that's your formula hit enter and it's 199 now we know how to do division so if I come over here and do equals uh, 6 divided by 2 that will give us 3 but for multiplication equals let's do 3 times use the asterisk 3 that's for multiplication hit enter and it gives us 9 so you can do that you can do a mix of it you can say well within this formula up in the formula bar equals 200 minus 1 and you can say also minus or add and then select a cell that contains a number in it and get a mixture of both and then to get back out of it hit the escape key and we're good thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos and for great specials on my products please look in the description below this video